Welcome back to Isha Gaming and welcome back to another Played Lately video where I will be talking about a lot of games that I've been playing lately and a few pickups. Now I'm going to start off with Mario Kart 8. There has been dropped 8 new courses to it. This is my Wii U edition of it, but I have it on the Switch and I have it digitally on the Switch. I have been playing the new courses and including there are like Coco Mountains and some other retro stages that they have remastered and remade and it is fun to jump back into it and it made me think which Mario Kart was actually my favorite. I have played all Mario Karts, not the first one on Super Nintendo though, didn't have that. But I played Mario Kart 64, Double Dash, Mario Kart Wii, basically I've played almost all. <laughs> Mario Kart. But I have to say my favorite is actually Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS. I don't know, I really love that. But oh my god, Mario Kart 8 has now... I mean, to begin with, it had 48 stages and now it has 48 more stages coming. So if you have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch and you have the online expansion thing, you will get your 8 stages already now. Fun to jump back into, thought I would mention it new stages in Mario Kart. Now something else that I have been playing lately, and this was before Elden Ring. This is pre-Elden Ring times. There's a new time now after Elden Ring and before Elden Ring. But this one, I played this a lot when I was sick recently. Uh, up in my living room, on my Xbox Series X. And this is a backlog game from 2021 that I just never got around to finish or even play a lot, I think. That was in a time when I had, and I felt like I had too many games, which I also feel now that I have too many games to play. But the thing is, I went back to it and now I am a bunch of hours into it. I've started to get the hang of everything, get the hang of the combat, the characters and the character progressions. And it is a game that is action combat based. It reminds me often of Astral Chain for the Switch. And I can now say with more confidence that I recommend Scarlet Nexus than I did earlier when I mentioned it, basically. Because now that I've actually played it and really delved into this game, I can confirm I am enjoying it and it looks very, very beautiful. The graphics are insane in this game. It's one of the more prettier looking JRPGs in recent times, in my opinion. It's 60 frames per second, it's optimized for Series X. Maybe a lot of my subscribers don't have a Series X or has any Xbox, but if you're ever gonna pick up an Xbox, I recommend this one. I don't think it's out on PlayStation or any other place. I don't know, actually. <laughs> I like the music, I like the graphics, I like the story in this one. I'm not often captivated by stories. Story. But, but this one, very nice. It's futuristic and it has a lot of time traveling in the story, which I am always a sucker for, time traveling. So Scarlet Nexus is another one that I've been playing lately. The Nintendo Switch has Nintendo 64 titles on it now and I haven't talked much about this. These are the two titles that I'm currently replaying again on the Nintendo Switch now with the Switch 64 app. Two childhood games of mine and they look a lot better right now on the Switch than they did on the TV screen back in the day. And that is probably because it is an emulation and they are running ROMs basically. But everything looks very crisp. Let me just tell you, if you haven't played these games, they are older now, I see that. They are like 20 years old or more, 25 years old. I'm getting old. But Paper Mario and Zelda Majora's Mask, especially Paper Mario actually. It's a very cozy game. Green grass game. I loved it in my childhood and I have hundreds of hours into this game. It's an RPG game with the Mario characters in the Mario universe, turn-based combat, a big world to explore and a ton of things to collect. These are my actual physical copies from my childhood and I love them to death and it is so much fun to see this being now put out on the Switch, accessible for the 
people that grow up right now also so that uh, the kids of today let's say they can enjoy games that I enjoyed when I was a kid so definitely been playing that it has the save states so that means things are much easier now than they were I'm also playing Ocarina of Time soon done with that also Majora's Mask on the other hand may actually be quite a hard game it was hard back then but you can do it you can do it it's not like Elden Ring or something like that sort of hard, but good hard, I don't know. So another pickup that I picked up yesterday is this controller that I've been looking very much forward to. It is the new Razer Wolverine V2 controller and I am a sucker for Razer talked about that on the podcast. This controller exceeds all my expectations. It is the best controller I've ever held in my hands. It is my dream controller, my favorite controller right now. It's expensive because it's racer, but you know, I'm a sucker for racer. Mechanical buttons also, and it just fits perfectly into my hands. And this is now my third controller by Razer. I have the Razer Raju Tournament Edition and the Razer Raju Ultimate, and now the Wolverine V2. Very nice. Thought I would mention it, thought I would show it off. So that is a little treat for myself. Highly, uh, highly love it. Now, Bergsala, Nintendo of Norway, they send me a lot of Nintendo games. And here is my backlog currently with Nintendo games. We have Triangle Strategy. I've only played it for one hour, I think. And I, I don't have the time right now. I will pick it up later. Maybe it will be like the same story as with other games. Like, for example, Scarlet Nexus. I got it last year, played it a little, and I had too many games, and something else was uh, catching my interest a, a lot more. So this one is gonna be in my backlog for some time, I have a feeling. But it is a tactical strategy game with a pixel art art style. The graphics are very reminiscent to um, Octopath Traveler's graphics, I think. But I've seen on my Discord some people are very hooked into this game already. That is gonna be in my backlog. Maybe I will talk about it later, some day. Some day. Now here is Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy. I haven't even opened it yet because I have too many games. Is this good? I have not much experience with the Grand Theft Auto series, but it is really cute that it is released on the Switch as a trilogy for the fans, for the hardcore fans of Grand Theft Auto. And I know a lot of people who are hardcore fans. Uh, I can appreciate that. But it says internet to download required. So maybe not all of the games are on the cartridge. Wouldn't surprise me. Let's get physical, guys. <laughs> So uh, here's another game, Chocobo Grand Prix, Square Enix uh, racer game with the, the mascot from Final Fantasy. Uh, this one I haven't even opened yet either. This is my backlog games, okay? You know, I recently got all of these sent from Bergsala, thank you again. But there are just too many games, there's so many games. And also when you have a YouTube channel like this, I feel like there are sometimes an expectation of which games I should play and should talk about. And right now, as you may know, Rune Factory 5 is out and yeah, I have the game and I'm, I'm working my way through it and I will make my review. So a lot of people are looking forward to my review of Rune Factory 5, definitely, but um, I haven't played it yet uh, too much. I need to play it more. I cannot rush out a review until I feel satisfied and I've seen most of the game. That is how I like to do things, but I can give you a quick first impression, I guess. A lot of people are very hungry to hear what I have to say about it. Because this time I have mixed feelings towards Rune Factory 5. Don't get me wrong, I am a huge Rune Factory fan. I have always been a big fan of Rune Factory. You all know that. And this one has been one very anticipated game for me. Extremely anticipated. But I have to say one of my biggest complaints with Rune Factory 5 right now is that I feel like it is very unpolished and it doesn't feel finished. And I think, in my opinion, that 
the performance is struggling. My character is often sliding. Uh, some cutscenes, the faces of the characters, they are shaking. Some glitches and some bugs and it doesn't run very smoothly at all, uh, in my opinion. I sneak peeked upstairs at one review, don't remember the YouTuber, but a YouTuber said in their review that the performance was good and I was sitting there like, have we been playing the same game? I don't find the performance very great as of right now though in Rune Factory 5. But I have gotten a review code before the actual release, so oftentimes there is a day one patch. Not always, but oftentimes. So I'm gonna wait a tiny bit with my review, see if they patch that stuff up so that I can actually focus on the game mechanics in my review and not complain about what I feel like is bad performance. If you are a fan of Rune Factory, of course that is a no-brainer. You should just buy it right now, pick it up. You do the same gameplay loop as expected in a Rune Factory game and it's just the graphics that are sort of bothering me. And like I said, the performance. Also there's very little voice acting, but I'm okay with that. I can handle that. But the main reason I'm not done with Rune Factory 5 review is because of Elden Ring. <laughs> my previous video on my channel I said that I'm playing Elden Ring and guess what I'm playing? I'm playing Elden Ring with my new Razer controller and I am just mesmerized in Elden Ring. I am now much more powerful. I'm now like level 49 I think, soon 50. I feel very confident now with the game. I'm entering a lot of different caves and ruins and I'm taking down now a lot of bosses. No one has helped me so far. I tried <laughs> to have my neighbor, you know neighbor Stefan, to help me with Margit, the first boss of the game, but he couldn't do it. He was just not very good at the game. He got angry at the controls in the game, but I have actually gotten good and I have grinded. I have focused a lot on, you know, leveling up my character, upgrading my weapon and my shield, exploring a ton, obviously, getting to know how to master parry, block and roll, which the game is very much about actually. Uh, so now it is an, an amazing feeling, you know, I went into the game feeling like, like a small little kid that were killed instantly all the time. Very scared. I've never played a very hard game before because I'm an easy gamer. But I can say that Elden Ring has done something new for me in my gaming experienced life. And that is, I'm just not giving up. I'm very persistent because there is actually something that drives me to play this game more and I'm not putting this game away. And if you have put the game away, please pick it back up again. It will get easier further in. Take that from me. I swear it gets easier. If you just play like I said that I'm doing in my previous video, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be so fine and the game is gonna be so rewarding for you later, which it is for me now. It's my game of the year so far, by far. <laughs> I am above 30 hours in. So Elden Ring guys, I have been very impressed so far with the game. I'm liking it more than I thought I would. Now lastly, I found this old book while cleaning the house and cleaning my area, basically. Which is a Stardew Valley guidebook that I picked up on, I don't know, a website some years ago. And it is the prettiest Stardew Valley book ever. It has everything in it and everything is hand drawn. And it is a complete guide to the entire freaking game. But the thing is, the reason I brought this up right now is that I thought I'm gonna give this to Tiny Hats. This is one of her favorite games of all time. And I saw she post a picture of this book, I think, I don't know, on Discord. I have a feeling that she wants it, so I'm gonna surprise her with this. I'm gonna put this book in my car, make sure I give it to her next time I drive, drive by. It's such a pretty book. She deserves it more than me. I'm having the best time with the podcast that I'm having with Tiny Hats. My childhood friend, she's always been there for me, forever. And she's just my best friend. Uh, we have a podcast recording later today. I hope you want to listen to our podcast. It's very funny. We laugh all the time. We tell pretty funny jokes, mostly. 
So that was my plate lately. Played a lot of things. Hope you enjoyed it. Like my video and subscribe if you are new. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Bye.